What's happening, guys? Keith here with your June 24th edition of the Impact Report. So if you haven't checked out my review of this past week's episode of Impact, you can do so by clicking the link on the screen. And speaking of this past week's episode of Impact, it drew 262,000 viewers and ranked 128 on Cable's Top 150. Um, this was a tough episode up against the NBA draft, but as long as they put on a consistent product week to week, we really shouldn't be too focused on the numbers. Um, and I don't see the numbers really improving that much unless they move to a better network, as they are Pop TV's highest rated show. Um, and I don't think Pop TV does much as far as advertising. I mean, the only way you're really going to know about Impact Wrestling is through one of their social media platforms. So hopefully sooner rather than later, they can come up with a better TV deal. So after Impact went off the air Thursday, El Hijo del Fantasma posted on Twitter, To all my Impact Wrestling fans, hope you enjoyed tonight's match with my bro, Pentagon Jr. It has been quite an adventure. Won't be seeing you in a while, but know this, I enjoyed every second, and to me, you are all family. So unfortunately, it seems like Fantasma, for the time being, is on his way out of Impact Wrestling. Um, this kind of sucks, as myself and a bunch of other people had thought that they could do more with Phantasma, so hopefully if he does decide to come back, he will come back in a bigger role. Um, which is funny, because I think Josh had mentioned something on this week's teleconference about wanting to see more stars from Mexico come back, so maybe this will be an opportunity for them to bring somebody else back in Phantasma's spot. So this past week, Impact Wrestling announced a partnership with leading Australian independent professional wrestling organization, World Series Wrestling, known as WSW, and they will feature past and future events on the Global Wrestling Network. Um, so WSW's most recent events featured Impact Wrestling World Champion, Austin Aries, Johnny Impact, Brian Cage, and the Monster Abyss. This was a great pickup for Impact Wrestling. Um... I think the addition of the independent promotions is a huge selling point for the Global Wrestling Network. Myself have gotten into the Smash Wrestling brand recently since they pretty much upload every week's episode a day after it premieres on the Fight Network. Um, so some good stuff there, and I think that's a huge selling point. Um, hopefully they can fix some of the bugs with the GWN, like last weekend when Zero Fear went up. It seemed that a lot of people were met with technical difficulties, and I believe Impact made a uh, statement saying that it was due to the amount of traffic that they were experiencing and I mean if the brand continues to build and more and more traffic you're going to get to the site so hopefully that's something they work on before adding too much new content like I said hopefully we get some sort of live streaming in the future I think that will be definitely the next step once they fix all the difficulties so the Irish Daily Mirror sat down with Jimmy Jacobs and conducted an interview titled Impact Wrestling's Jimmy Jacobs Over the Moon with Life After the WWE. Jacobs said, I feel great. These past eight months of my career have been by far the most fun I've ever had. I'm very excited to be working in Impact Wrestling and using some of the things I picked up in my last job to help out here. He decided against resigning with former employers Ring of Honor when he returned to the independent scene opting instead to work with Impact Wrestling Vice President Scott Demore. Scott got in touch with me and said we should have a conversation about me coming here or if they even wanted me here. So I agreed to come to Ottawa for Bound for Glory, and they said I could be as much or as little a part of it as I wanted to be. And it was a good fit. I felt good. I went back to Ring of Honor with that, who had an offer on the table for me to do something. And the feeling was, if I was going to be working with Impact, then I wouldn't be working with Ring of Honor. I can't express it enough. I'm very happy with the decision. And we are very happy to have Jimmy Jacobs in Impact Wrestling too. So this past week's Impact media call, call was featuring Katarina. It was originally going to be Grado. However, he had a death in the family, so Katarina filled in for him. And she said she is looking forward to getting in the ring with the likes of Ali, Taya, and Tessa. She mentions that Ali is a complete package and will be champion many times over. She says that Tessa is a standout on the Knockouts roster and has that it factor. She also spoke very highly of Sue Young. Uh, she talks about the difference between her time in the company now and when she was previously there. 
She so says, for starters, there is a different there are different people in charge, and she is having a lot of fun in the new situation because it forces her to think on her feet. Uh, she's used to working as a heel character, but has learned a lot from Grado and is having a great experience in her new role. She says one thing she has yet to do and that she has always wanted to do is be in a cage match. Hint, hint. So who knows if we will see that. Um, and she finishes by saying one of her favorite moment, moments of her first Impact run was the hardcore match she had working with Mick, and working with Mickey James. So mirror.co.uk conducted an interview with Abyss a few days ago titled, Abyss says, Current Impact Wrestling roster shares hunger of past greats. He says, I've been here a long time and seen a lot of people come and go throughout the years. One thing I see is hunger in the locker room, which reminds me of the period of 2003 to 2005. I was there with the guys like Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, that original group of guys. We were all so hungry and didn't know what was going to happen from week to week, but just knew we were ready. With guys like Desmond Xavier, Brian Cage, Killer Cross, Pentagon, Austin Aries, you get a sense of how hungry they are, and it's a great feeling. Everyone is breaking their backs to put on the very best product, and that is exciting to be a part of. Uh, he is asked about, as someone who is involved with Impact since the beginning, how different is the new management regime? He says, the new management team, the Anthem folks, are incredible. Ed Nordholm has put a team in place who are behind it and very supportive. Then with Scott Demore, Don Callis, and Sanjay Dutt, there is a real difference, and that is that they are so willing and open to working with everybody and want to have strong ties. That never happened in the past, and we want to work with other companies. We are extending the olive branch to get some great stuff going, and this makes us stronger on our own and together. Um, he's asked about standout talent. And he says, I mean, that is what is exciting about the current roster. We have several players in place, from the guys to the girls. If you look at the knockouts and just look at Tessa Blanchard, you see there is nothing but a star. She is just amazing and has such a grasp of the business. Uh, Kiara Hogan is another great up-and-coming performer. Taya Valkyrie has a lot of great energy. Then you look at the guys, and there's Brian Cage, Sammy Callahan, who is really clever and innovative. Then we have Killer Cross, who is going to be a major player. We have a loaded roster right now, lots of room for growth, and everyone is up for the task. Uh, he is asked about the importance of getting back to running regular pay-per-views, and he says it is very important. Those live pay-per-views are, are a different feeling for wrestlers and the fans. To me, they are a staple of any company, and we do recognize that. Let's face it, viewer tendencies have changed a ton in recent years with social media and all different platforms. People consume things so differently. The Sunday night pay-per-view shows are prestigious and important for the growth of the company. And then he is asked what we can, when we can expect to see the monster back on our television screens. And he leaves with, all I can say is to stay tuned to Impact. I think that as we progress through the summer and get into the for the fall and prepare for bound for glory season the monster may be back in the impact zone so that is interesting news uh great to hear both jimmy jacobs and abyss talking highly of the company and the new regime uh, like i said not too much news this week um we finally start the canada tapings Next week, uh, we get the debut of Rich Swan, the Desi Hit Squad, and I'm very interested to see how things progress from here to Slammiversary. Interested in the build for the main event along with the other matches. But that is all I have for you guys today. Thanks for checking out my video, and until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.